uh, a, a taxpayer-funded program that creates the illusion of environmental protection while doing little to stem the destruction of precious natural resources. And that's kind of been the theme of a lot of the work that I've done as, as a, a, the environmental reporter for the St. Pete Times, is to write about government programs that are promising to protect nature and don't. And therefore, even if it doesn't bother you as someone who cares about the environment, it should bother you as a taxpayer that you're paying for these programs that say they're producing results and are not. Um, in uh, Manatee Insanity, uh, I took a look at the whole history of manatee protection, dating all the way back to 1893, when a, a legislator from right here, Miami, a fellow named Frederick Morse, he was on the very first city council, um, went to Tallahassee as a state legislator and uh, sponsored a bill saying nobody should be allowed to kill a manatee anymore unless they get a permit from their county commission. And if you kill it without a permit, then you have to face a $500 fine and you have to spend time in jail and the only way to get a permit is to prove that you're doing it for scientific purposes. Can you guess how well that law worked out? <laughs> there were still people, you know, killing manatees for, for food for years and years after that. Uh, and um, uh, later in the book I talk about uh, how the, the very first time someone <laughs> spotted and reported and wrote down that a manatee had, had scars from being hit by a boat was Dan Beard. Everglades National Park fame. Uh, in a book called Fading Trails, he reported seeing a manatee swimming up the Miami River with all kinds of scars on its back. Uh, it was because of Dan Beard commissioning one of his biologists, uh, a fellow named Joe Moore, to actually go and do research on manatees because he said, I want to know, are they about to be wiped out? Are they about to go extinct? Or are they bouncing back? What, what's the truth here? And Joe Moore diligently searched all over Florida for manatees, wrote to people all over the state about manatees, and the place he found the best viewing of manatees was the Miami River on a cold morning. He would go there on very, very cold mornings and stand on the river, stand, stand on the bridge over the river, and look down at the outfall from the power plant, and he would see the manatees gathered there, and he was the very first one to figure out, hey, if I want to tell one manatee from the other, for the purposes of studying them, I can use the pattern of propeller scars on their backs. This was in 1949 that he figured that out. They're still using that method today. Uh, and uh, in fact, I don't know if you can really see this too well, but this the cover photo was actually shot in Biscayne Bay. That's a picture of a boat hitting a manatee. The uh, folks from Durham happened to be doing an aerial survey at the time and snapped the photo. Um, 